This is WBRC Fox 6 Law Call. Well, welcome into Law Call tonight. We are certainly glad that you are here joining us tonight. We are in for a very exciting show, a very important show, especially in this time of, of COVID-19, dealing tonight with the topic of crime and punishment. You know, you have a right to legal counsel, but what can you do if you are not happy with a court-appointed attorney? And what about your Miranda rights? What happens if they are violated? We ask that you give us a call with your questions, the number 855-LAW-1955. Also tonight, going to be addressing the issue of nursing homes, how you make that difficult decision when it's time to put a, a loved one in a nursing home, selecting the right one, very important. But first tonight, personal injury attorney Kirby Ferris is here uh, to take a look at one of your email questions. Let's get right to it if we can. That question for tonight is, um, here is what our writer says. I used weed killer to clear land behind my backyard. I started getting headaches and then I got very sick. I eventually had to go to the doctor and missed several days of work. I used the weed killer exactly as instructed. Do I have a case? And Kirby tonight that comes from Alan. Yeah, well Alan, obviously uh, weed killer has been in the news a lot. It There's has. been a lot of litigation about that. And um, in a case like the one you're describing, Alan, you have to prove a couple of different things. Uh, first, you have to prove that your illness was actually caused by the weed killer. And that requires expert medical testimony from your doctor. And then you have to prove that obviously there's something wrong with the weed killer or it was manufactured incorrectly or the products are dangerous. That process is very, very expensive, very time consuming. But Alan, your starting point would be talking to your doctor about whether your doctor's opinion is that the weed killer actually caused your illness. And then, uh, are you gonna have serious effects? Is that gonna uh, cause you problems down the road? So those are some questions that you ought to start with with your doctor. If your doctor says it is properly related, then you should probably see a lawyer. Certainly a great question. And for more information, if you'd like more on that topic or certainly others, you can certainly go to www.deliveringjustice.com or you can go to www.wbrc.com and you can click on the law call link. Well, as I mentioned, the wonderful Kirby Ferris here with us tonight, but also uh, really one of the best, I would say, yes. uh, defense attorneys here in the Metro. Tell us a little bit about our oh, guest tonight. Let me tell you about this guy. John <laughs> Lentine is, first of all, he's, he's a dear friend. Yes. But he's been practicing criminal defense work in, in our area for 33 years. He has been a professor at the Birmingham School of Law, yes. uh, teaching, teaching um, criminal law there for 16 years. He's been a trial advocacy uh, professor at uh, San, uh, uh, Sanford for wow. uh, 25 years. He's extremely accomplished and yes. good friend. And I'm very grateful for him coming out with us yes. tonight. Yes, yes. Well, John, we're here tonight. Uh, tell us a little bit about just your practice, if you will. Well, I'm in a firm with my law partner, Wendell Sheffield, and uh, two other attorneys, Christopher Daniel and Anthony Bowling. And if everything goes well, uh, hopefully my son soon, uh, if he's past the bar, we'll find out in a few months. Uh, we do a little bit of everything, uh, family law, a little domestic, a little bit of personal injury, but I think we're mostly known for criminal defense, both in federal court, state court, and municipal courts across the state of Alabama. Wonderful. Well, again, certainly glad to have you with us tonight. And also want to let our viewers know that if you have a question, please don't hesitate to give us a call. You'll find the number there at the bottom of your screen, 855-529-1955 tonight. And Kirby, you talked a little bit, bit about just uh, John and just the work that he's done yeah, across fantastic. the metro. Hey, John, you mentioned that y'all practice in all those court systems. Talk to us a little bit about that, the difference between uh, having a case in federal court and, and that form of criminal prosecution, state court uh, versus municipal. Well, you know, mis we'll start from the municipal courts. Municipal courts are virtually in every municipality within the state, and mostly cases there are things like uh, traffic violations or some um, smaller misdemeanor type offenses, theft in the third or fourth degree kind of cases there. Uh, state system, we're dealing with mostly misdemeanors and felony prosecutions. Uh, in the circuit courts and the district courts across the state. And in federal court, we have three federal districts in Alabama, the northern, the middle, and the southern. Uh, and we're here in the northern district in Birmingham. And those are f cases that are violations of federal law. 
Uh, in fact, there's virtually so many federal laws now, they, I don't think we have enough books that can keep them all, but it's a challenging in federal court because there's uh, many different uh, facets that are different than the state court system. And um, people charged in the federal system are looking at very long roads to hoe, um, given the nature of the punishment in the federal system compared to the state system. John, not all criminal defense attorneys work in the federal courts, isn't that correct? No, not many do. Um, I've worked in it for quite a long time. Uh, it's very challenging. Things move much quicker than they do in the state system. Um, the punishments are, can be much more severe in the federal system. And it, it's almost a specialization to uh, practice in the federal system these days. Well, John, you know, you mentioned just the speed at the federal level. You know, we, we've heard many times the right to a speedy trial. Talk a little bit in this era of COVID. Are you still seeing that that is still the case, that cases are moving or are able to move as quickly uh, during this time, even at that level? You know, Melanie, they're, they're not. And, you know, many attorneys, especially if your client's incarcerated, are filing motions for speedy trial, uh, which in the federal system and in the state system to some extent have specific requirements about when a trial has to be held once a client has uh, invoked the right to a speedy trial. But one of those issues is whether or not because of the virus and because of the inability to really set up a jury trial in the way we would need to, um, that has slowed things down. And in quite across the country we're seeing less and less uh, jury trials happening. And here. In, in Alabama, we're probably at a standstill almost, and I'm not quite sure when we're going to be able to move forward with it, especially the difference between criminal law and civil law where we have rights of such as confrontation of a witness where we couldn't do it like we're doing it today via like a Zoom or me being in another room or something of that nature. You know, criminal system, the person has a right to confront their accusers. So it's going to be especially difficult getting trials these days. and the midst of the corona pandemic and try to see them like they were before the virus started. Just the precautions alone are going to be almost mind-boggling to try to have a trial. So much to wrap our minds around, so thank you for that insight. We again certainly want to take your calls tonight. The number to call 855-529-1955. Our topic tonight is crime and punishment. We're going to take a, a quick break and we'll be right back with your questions. When you or a loved one is injured in an accident and need help, there are many attorneys to choose from. We recommend contacting your local family attorney for advice on who to choose. It doesn't cost you anymore, and you know you can trust your local family lawyer. Whether they helped you with a criminal matter, a bankruptcy, divorce, or disability, give them a call first. We are Ferris, Riley, and Pitt, and we are trying to help you get the best result for your case. WBRC Fox 6 Law Call from the Birmingham law firm of Ferris, Riley and Pitt. Personal injury attorney Kirby Ferris, a proven advocate known for his aggressive courtroom skills. Personal injury attorney Ken Riley, practical, professional, recognized by Birmingham Magazine as one of Birmingham's top attorneys. Plus, guest attorneys from across Alabama. Your rights, your calls, live. And welcome back into Law Call tonight. Certainly glad that you are joining us. You know, if you have a decision on long-term care, and if that's in your short-term future, you wanna make sure that you do your homework first. Now in tonight's legal brief, personal injury attorney Ken Riley's has some important advice on what you need to look out for. Moving a loved one into a nursing home is a very stressful time for everyone. But there are some things you need to know before you choose a facility. Here are the most common problems nursing homes won't tell you about. One, is the facility understaffed? Two, are there medication dispensing problems? Three, is there a problem with theft by employees? Four, is the care plan being followed? And five, are there any cases of neglect at the home? Before you choose a nursing home, talk to friends and family members about their experiences and who they'd recommend. Another great tool is the rating system on Medicare.gov. This isn't a decision to be taken lightly. So make sure you're putting your loved one in the place that is best 
for them. That's your legal brief for tonight. I'm personal injury attorney Ken Riley with Ferris Riley and Pitt in Birmingham. Back to you guys. Wonderful. Thanks a lot, Ken. Uh, tonight, again, taking your calls on the topic of crime and punishment, the number to call 1-855-529-1955. At this time, we want to go to Tammy from Cottondale. We understand she's on the line. Tammy, what's your question tonight? Uh, I'm just going to ask a question uh, uh, about the, are they supposed to, who am I speaking with right now? You're speaking with uh, a defense attorney, John Lentine. He's here to answer your question. Go right yeah, ahead. Yeah, I was calling to find out about uh, my uh, two of my sons got in this trouble, and this, this other guy, and I want to know is they supposed to charge my son with the, that, and they didn't even kill that person. It was a robbery involved, but my sons didn't do it, but this other guy done it. Uh, mm. uh, are they supposed to charge my sons with life of the possibility in a 30-year sentence and the, that other guy, Jack, got two lives without. Are they supposed to do that? Well, Tammy, I'm not sure I, I understand it totally. It sounds like there was two people involved or your son was accused and then there was another person involved. Is, is that what you're asking? Three people. It was three people. My son, Bob, Ben, Sean, and Jack, and Jack got uh, two lives for, and uh, he uh, he killed somebody the year before that. And well, has your son actually been charged with something at this point? They, but they, the, it, it was they both were charged. They both would have got murder charges, and they didn't kill that person. Okay. Well, I mean, has your son hired an attorney? Has he? Go, has the case gone to trial yet? I guess I'm trying to find a little more information so I can try to answer your question. It's already went to trial. They've been gone. Bobby was going to get a. Uh, get out in the year 2020, and Kay Ivory stopped everybody's pro cut. I had I paid a pro lawyer because some man got out and killed three people, so they stopped everybody's pro cut. Well, one of the problems right now is is that there are a lot of people that are seeking parole who have health issues, and I'm not sure whether your son is one of those persons. You know, generally what happens is if you've been convicted and sentenced, the only time that you get out of prison is either on parole or after you finish your sentence. If your son has some medical issues, there may be some um, things that you can do by contacting an attorney to see whether or not that he might be eligible for what's called a medical parole. Um, unfortunately, the, the governor and um, the Department of Corrections and the parole board are not moving as fast as I would think they need to given the coronavirus is in our prisons and that trying to find individuals who have pre-existing conditions to let them out would be important. But if you if your son has any of those issues, I suggest that you might contact an attorney uh, in Tuscaloosa and see if they might be able to help you. Wonderful. Thanks a lot, John, for that answer. Let's go now to Lisa from Lipscomb. Lisa, what's your question tonight? Um, I have. I would like to know if you assign a court-appointed lawyer and you feel like he's not representing you, how do you go about getting another lawyer? Um, that's a difficult situation, ma'am. When a person is appointed counsel by the court, um, they don't have counsel of choice. Uh, it's either going to be, depending on where the person is charged at, there's either going to be a public defender's office or they're going to be appointed an attorney. Generally, you don't get to pick an appointed attorney. Uh, if there are issues about whether you think the lawyer is not doing the best job they can for an individual, that individual can notify the court and the court may have a hearing to determine whether or not to keep the lawyer on. Um, the only other thing that can be done is to hire an attorney and that's going to be hard if the person doesn't have money to do so. Mm -hmm. So if there are some issues about whether they're, they're getting competent representation, they can always bring that matter up to the court and the court can theoretically change counsel if there's a breakdown between the attorney and the client. Awesome. Wonderful. We also want tonight on the line, we have Robert from Shelby County. Robert, what's your question tonight? It's about domestic violence charge. Okay, go right ahead. Ma'am? Go right ahead with your question. Okay, I have, uh, I was charged with domestic violence and the 13-year-old called when I got in an argument and we don't want to press charges. 
my fiance does not want to press charges. It was an argument, and I got toted off to jail. Has, has, have you already been charged? Did the police charge you? Is that what happened? Yes, sir. I've already bonded out. Okay. Well, you know, obviously, you know, what happens is when a domestic violence call comes in, the police come in and they make a determination as to who they're going to charge. Sometimes they charge both people. Generally, they'll charge one person. It becomes, I would suggest, a little bit more difficult when the person who is supposedly the victim of the domestic violence says they weren't the victim, that that didn't happen. So the best thing you can do, obviously, is to hire a lawyer as soon as possible um, and be able to you know, have that ability to have a lawyer represent you, uh, obviously, if that person doesn't want to come to court and they don't want to come to court or if they're not subpoenaed to come to court, then it's going to be much more difficult potentially for them to convict you, but I would suggest the, mo the most important thing you do now is to hire an attorney to get an attorney working for you and to protect your rights right now. Wonderful. Wonderful. Great questions tonight. We certainly hope that if you have some at home that you'll give us a call. But right now, I want to take a quick break. We'll be back with more of your questions. You're watching Fox 6 WBRC. If you would like to contact our guest, John Lentine, in his office, his office is located in Birmingham. You can call him at 205-328-1365, or you can send him an email at, to john at sheffieldlentine.com. If you have any additional questions for Kirby Ferris of, or Ken Riley of Ferris, Riley & Pitt, you can reach them here in Birmingham. Their number, 205-324-1212, or on the web at deliveringjustice.com. You can also follow them on Twitter and on Facebook. Let's go now, if we can, to another caller. Understand that Sheila from Coleman is on the line with a question. Sheila, go right ahead. Yes, sir. I was telling about my son. Hey, that he got, they got a call in at the late that my son uh, was drinking and stuff. But when, when I got there, the officer did not, um, you know, give me no fine or ticket or nothing. Said that he wasn't. I mean, he wasn't even driving. He was in the late. They pulled him out. But now he has to go to probation, and and they got him for intoxication when they first time he got him for DUI. So I'm trying to figure out. I'm new to all this, so I don't know what I need to do. Well, ma'am, I. Uh I'm trying to piece together a little bit about it. It sounds like if your son got probation that he pled guilty to some offense. Do you know if he pled guilty to public intoxication? No, he, he did not. He, when I got there, the officer told me that his friend that was with him, it was him and his friend and my two younger daughters and their friends at the lake, and they told me that they, they uh, smell alcohol on his friends. How, how old is your son? He he was sixteen when this happened. Okay, sixteen. All right. And did did they actually arrest him and take him to jail? They when I got there, they had him in handcuffs in the car and said they was going to take him. And then they called somebody and then they let him go. And then I got a letter saying that he had to go to probation Tuesday for it, for public intoxication. Okay. W what I would suggest you do is if you have a letter from and I guess it's from a court then you probably need to hire an attorney. Bring that letter to an attorney so he or she can go over it with you, explain what the charges are, what they, what that letter want, is asking or telling your son he has to do. And that way, both of you know exactly what's going on. You both know what you know his rights are, and it, he's protected. And I think that's what you need to do as soon as possible. Bring that letter to a lawyer and let she or he go over it with you. And, and how you facilitate some of your clients in drug court and, and how it can help people in, in a similar situation as we just heard. Sure, Kirby. You know, drug court, uh, there's drug courts almost in every county in Alabama, and those courts are designed for generally first-time offenders who are charged with possession-type cases to have an opportunity to go into the drug court program, which allows them to receive treatment, 
um, they can do some public service and to basically take you know get them off of drugs and if they could successfully complete the program whatever they were charged with whatever whether it was a felony or misdemeanor are going to be dismissed so they won't have any kind of conviction on their record it's a very good program for those uh, first-time offender. Sometimes it's someone who had more than one offense, but it's generally aimed at trying to get people off of drugs and at the same time reward them by getting their cases eventually dismissed if they successfully complete the program. Wonderful. Hey, John, you can help your clients navigate that system. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would suggest you always have an attorney when you go into any kind of diversion program because there are going to be some glitches that can happen along the way and you may need the attorney to be involved in that aspect of it. So generally when you're charged with any kind of criminal offense, rather than try to resolve it on your own, it's better to have an attorney there as a guiding hand for you. Excellent, excellent. Let's go to Patricia from Pinson who's on the line. Patricia, your question tonight? It is. Uh, my daughter is in Tuckwaller Prison and um, she has given been giving sentences that run, I believe it's concurrent, where she does four years and then three years and then four more years. Uh, she has been in, the, been in there for right at four years, and uh, she has gotten her uh, Fort Lift license degree, her welding license mm -hmm. degree, um, several others. Fact, she has completed SAP so many times. Uh, all the uh, all kinds of uh, certificates she has received, and um, I don't understand why they will not let her out early, say, saying that she has um, completed all these uh, and, and gotten all these certificates. Well, Patricia, when somebody's been convicted. They have, they're given a sentence. There's two types of sentences, what's concur called concurrent and consecutive. And concurrent generally, yeah, both of them generally involve when there's more than one sentence. And if your daughter had a four-year sentence and a three-year sentence and they were run concurrent, that means they run together. So the, she would finish the longer sentence, the four-year sentence, and that would be the end. And she would be specifically released at the end of her sentence. If it was four years, then the amount of time plus good time would leave her to get out. If she's serving consecutive sentences, that means you do one sentence and when you finish it, you start the next one. So what I think you should do is find out who her attorney was, find out as much as you can of what exactly she had, whether she had concurrent or consecutive sentences, so you'll know. And then you can call the Department of Corrections in Montgomery and ask for some specifics about when your daughter should be released. Excellent. And you know, Kirby, just really a lot of questions tonight, just especially not only just considering cases in general, but with COVID. Yes. So, so many questions that can be unique. Yeah, they, they really are, John. Uh, John, real briefly, we just got a, a minute left. T talk, tell our folks when a lawyer needs to get involved. At what point in time when, when you're having a criminal problem, when should you hire a lawyer? You know, I think that people who have any kind of criminal issue, whether they're talked to by the police or they receive a summons, they need to hire an attorney immediately. It's not one of these things that you can wait and they get, things will get better, they get worse. Hire an attorney as quick as you can to make sure your rights are protected. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We hope you'll join us back here next Sunday night after the news. We hope you'll have a great week.